In the woods outside the monastery, Kenna and Gabriel hide with their weapons ready, waiting for Marco's assassins. <sighs> we were lucky to get Dominic's message in time. Pidge has earned a lifetime of fresh meat. <laughs> Agreed. Now anyone coming from Stormholt will have to come through this forest. We just have to wait. Suddenly, Kenna spots three assassins creeping along the path. Knocking an arrow on her longbow, she pulls back on her bowstring and focuses the first assassin. She notices the winds blowing to the right. Kenna aims her bow slightly to the left of the first assassin's head. I have you now. Kenna fires the arrow, sending it flying into the head of the first assassin. It strikes with a sickening thunk. What was that? Who's out there? Knocking another arrow, Kenna aims at the second assassin. But her view is obscured by trees. He creeps past the trees, giving her a clear shot. Her arrow punctures a gap in his armor, just above his breastplate. He falls to his knees, his hands grasping at his neck. <sighs> Kenna? It's done, Gabriel. The sound of horses galloping fills the forest. It cannot be. Dozens more assassins rush to the forest, some on horseback. Others marching on foot. Marco didn't just send assassins. He sent an entire army. We cannot stop them all. The monks. We've got to get back to the monastery. We will not be faster than mounted soldiers. we still got to try. Keeping to the shadows, Kenna and Gabriel make their way back to the monastery. The monastery is in flames. Marco's soldiers swarm around it. Damn. Damn. I never imagined he would send so many. They had us badly outnumbered. There is nothing we could have done. Do you think the monks made it out in time? They knew it might come to this. I am certain they made it out. Oh no. From behind a pillar, Kenna watches as two of Prince Marco's soldiers drag one of the monks forward. Where is the queen? I do not answer to you. You know, I never tortured a monk before. Will you hold out longer than a common man? Only one way to find out. I'll need my tools. Stay if you must, but I'm leaving. By being here, we're already going against King Luther's wishes. You mean we're following Prince Marco's orders? We both know the king didn't care for Marco's plan. Besides, the girl's not here, which means she was warned. She knew we were coming. Fine, soldiers. Take this man with us for questioning. No! We cannot allow this to happen. We do not have a choice. For if we ourselves, we risk everything the monks fought for. Gabriel, you're right. We must flee. We have no choice. As Kenna and Gabriel creep through the forest, she breathes deeply, trying to block out her rage. Kenna, look! Pidge circles overhead. Pidge is circling in the monastery. Quick, call him! Now, before Marco's people see him. Dom's hawk will come if I whistle two short blasts. That is it. Pidge veers sharply and lands on her wrist. I knew I remembered it. <sighs> Hello, old friend. At least we managed to save you. And I've got a mission for you. I need you to take a message to Dom. At the temple, Bartel gazes out at the woods. Helene, do you see that? See what? That hawk, the way you just dove, most peculiar. Everything about you is most peculiar. Focus on what matters. Hmm. Later that night, Kenna and Gabriel are camping out. The monastery is destroyed. The monks driven out. My training master captured, all because of me. You cannot blame yourself. They knew the risk of keeping you hidden. Now you must be strong. The best way to honor the man who taught you to fight is to use what he taught you to defeat King Luther. I couldn't agree more. With Luther taking the bulk of his forces west, there won't be a better time to take back Stormholt. That is true. But what about Prince Marco's army? We have roughly 50 Rajka monks. And now, they have even more reason to help you against Marco. <laughs> we also have Prince Tevin's soldiers. He's bringing us 200 of his best fighters. That is a start, but we will need more. Much more. What about my people? Your people will rally against the Navraki's family. 
but they are village folk, blacksmiths and merchants, farmers and milkmaids. Then we'll find soldiers. Surely there are others who will stand against Prince Marco. And once we find enough soldiers to build an army, we will need food, weapons, armor. I know. We'll need enough coin to pay for all that. And siege weaponry. Stormhold's castle walls are impregnable. That is why your mother made it the heart of her kingdom. Marco will be looking for us. We don't have much time. Where should we go first? I have heard rumors that the captain of your mother's royal guard made it out of Stormhold with many of his men. I remember him. His name was Leon. Captain Leon, right? Yes, that is correct. As I heard, he was spotted roaming the grasslands trying to avoid Luther's men. Then we've got to find him and convince him to join us. Pid will relay our plan to Dom. Knowing Dom, he will not rest until he hands you back your crown himself. At the Stormholt Castle, Dom and Tristan are hauling kitchen supplies when a familiar cry sounds from above. Looking up, he sees Pidge. Pidge! Dom whistles two short blasts. Pidge circles and lands on his arm. There's something tied to Pidge's leg. Is it from Kenna? Did your warning reach her in time? Pulling off the message, Dom releases Pidge. But before you can read what Kenna wrote, a soldier spots him. What's this? A couple of lazy servants wasting time? We were just hauling these supplies to the kitchen. Looked like you were just standing around waiting for them to haul themselves. The soldier kicks over a basket of fruit. Best pick that up, boy. Now isn't the time to fight. I don't want him to spot Kenna's message. Yes, sir. Of course. Dom bends down to pick up the fruit. Looking at his hand, he sees fire flickering along his palm. But he clenches his fist and takes a deep breath. The fire disappears, as all pulled back into his hand. I was able to control it. Sorry for taking your time, sir. You better be. Now get out of here! That was close. Did you manage to hold on to the message? Right here. Let's see what it says. Now is the time to act. Before the winter thaw, I will return to attack Stormhole and take back our home once and for all. It's really going to happen, isn't it? Tristan. Marco's going to fall. And we'll be helping Kenna every step of the way. You and Kenna. You were close, weren't you? As close as an abandoned orphan and a princess were able to be. Doesn't sound very close to me. It wasn't. Usually, we never got to spend more than a few moments alone together. Gabriel was always looming over us like an angry guard dog. But there was one time. I'd gone to the Beltane Festival by myself. And there she was. She disguised herself as a peasant girl. But I'd recognize Kenna anywhere. You went to the Beltane Festival? With the princess? Dom feels his face grow hot and looks away quickly. It wasn't like that. I mean, we didn't go together, but... But you were there. Together. At the Beltane Festival. They say a girl's as likely to kiss you as look at you at Beltane. We did go to the festival together. I can remember every detail. It was the Festival of Beltane four years ago. Dominic is walking past the festival booths and bonfires outside the castle walls when he spots a familiar figure in a cloak. Dominic sneaks up behind Princess Kenna and grabs her arm. Boo! <gasps> Without seeing Dominic, Kenna instinctively tries to elbow him in the side, but he dodges her. What's the Princess of Stormwall doing out without an escort? Oh, Dom. It's only you. Only me? Indeed. You sure know how to make a man feel appreciated. <laughs> Very funny. I meant that I was sure one of the castle guards had rooted me out. It's the festival of Beltane. I wanted to spend some time away from the castle and... and... Well, it's silly. Go on, try me. <sighs> I wanted to pretend to be a normal girl. Just for a few hours. Let me help. Really? Are you kidding? I'm dying to see your normal girl impression. Kenna punches Dom's arm. <laughs> what shall we do first? The first thing you need is something cheap and tasty. Merchant, I'll take two charred chicken wings. Dom takes a chicken and hands one to Kenna. This is black as soot. 
Are you sure it's edible? Trust me, eat up. This, this is delicious. You said you wanted a taste of being a normal girl. That I did. <laughs> oh. Right in front of Dominic, a village maiden pulls a young man into a deep kiss. He lifts her up onto a barrel and begins kissing her neck. That's Beltane for you. I guess you might be seeing more than you bargained for. It's not that. I envy them. Sometimes. Who? Oh, the maidens in the castle, the village, the farms. The ones who can kiss every man at this festival if they feel like it. Not like you? Heavens forbid. Oh, I see now. You're looking to get a kiss at the Beltane Festival. No, that's not... Everyone knows that every girl gets as many kisses as she wants around the bonfire on the night of Beltane. I... I only wanted to go to the festival. I wasn't planning to... No, I see it all now. You want a hundred kisses tonight, and you'll stop at nothing to get them. That's not it. I... I've never even kissed anyone. You haven't? Is it so surprising? I'm the Princess of Stormholt. My mother had made it very clear that I'll be the most sought-after prize once the Alliance is finalised. My first will probably be to seal some grand trade agreement. <sighs> I know it must seem silly. Pathetic, even. It seems tough. It does? Sure, you have a different life, Kenna. You get caught with some boy, and wars get started. <laughs> Probably not that bad. What I'm saying is that the stakes have always been high in everything you do. It's not surprising for you to want to escape. And, you know, kiss someone without any geopolitical ramifications. <laughs> Big words for you. And reassuring ones as well. The serving girls in the castle all gossip about you, you know. By all reports, you're quite experienced. I might have heard a rumor or two. And how about tonight? I've seen at least a half a dozen girls around giving you the oh please kiss me look. Maybe the girl I want isn't as easy to get. Dom. Perhaps I'm overstepping, but don't you think your first kiss should be with someone you want? I... I do, but... Princesses aren't allowed that luxury. At least, not officially. No, not officially. Dominic leans in and presses his lips to hers. For one second, it feels like the friend he's grown up with could be something more. He feels her start to kiss him back, then... Dom. You're blushing, your highness. <laughs> your behavior would make anyone blush. Back in the present. So, you and the princess? But that was a long time ago. We have bigger things to deal with right now, like preparing for Kenna's attack. After two days of hard riding through the grasslands, are you sure Leon and his men are around here? Rumors and gossip are all we have to go on. Mercenaries do not set up long in one place, unless there is profit in it. Suddenly, a man and a woman step out of the high grass, each wearing vastly different gear. Stop right there! What are you two doing here? I recognize that armor. That Stormholt armor! You're familiar with this armor? If you're a Stormholt soldier, you must be loyal to Captain Leon. I was a Stormholt soldier, but there's not Stormholt anymore. Not in any way that matters. I ride for myself now. This is all very entertaining, but you're suspiciously close to our encampment. You think we last long out here if we let anyone just wander in? This is a misunderstanding. We want to see your leader. Demanding, aren't we? Well, you're in no position to ask for anything. Hand over your weapons! What? This is our territory. Here, you do what we say. No, 